The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Christopher Clement. I work in the support team at Microsurvey. And joined with me also is Ken Fossey. He's the mobile project manager. He'll be the one uh, doing the webinar today. Um, so for this webinar, we'll just be going over some of the new features for the version 1.5 of Field Genius for Android. Uh, any questions you may have, you can use the questions or chat tabs on the, on the GoToMeeting. And I'll be monitoring the, the chat and taking a look at questions, and we can answer them at the end of the webinar. So I'll pass it off on to Ken, who will start his presentation. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this morning. Today, what I wanted to do is uh, go over uh, some new features we've added into Field Genius for Android. Um, Field Genius for Android is a new product for us. We launched it in the fall last year, and we are um, expanding out the functionality of this. It is a porting of our Field Genius product to a new platform. And you know, it's been uh, quite a, a fun journey for us. Uh, we are working on what's called a continuous release model uh, for the software development, which means that we uh, try to release uh, new updates a lot more frequently than we have in the past. And so, again, that's uh, frequent updates. We get to fix bugs quicker. Uh, and that makes also that the since their updates are um, more frequent, we're, you know, not adding a whole bunch of new features into each one. We're doing it continuously as, as we go along. So there's not like this annual um, release with a, you know, a whole bunch of new features. So um, that being said, we're, we're on 1.5 is our fifth uh, iteration. And what we've added in on the future side is we've added uh, support for some GNSS receivers that support Tilt using the IMU technology. This is a kind of relatively new technology uh, in the last year or so that's been coming onto the market and being adopted by the OEMs. Previously, it was magnetic with an inclinometer. And again, since we're in this continuous release model, we decided to release the Tilt measurement with supporting the IMU technology. Uh, in release 1.6, we're going to add in uh, backward compatibility for those devices that uh, use the magnetic and the inclinometer. We've also added support for importing CAD drawings uh, as a background map using the uh, DXF file format. So if you have a design drawing or something you want to bring into Field Genius, for Android, you can bring that in now as a background map and see it um, in the field as you're working. We've also added in the ability to select elements, individual elements off that map if you want to work with them. We've had a lot of requests to um, move towards supporting alphanumeric point numbering, and we added that into this release. So uh, previously, we were just uh, numeric one, two, three, four. Now you can. Um, use alphanumeric. And then we've added some uh, drivers. Uh, I'd say the, uh, the biggest group of drivers we added in this release was support for the, the CHC, uh, one of our OEM partners, and their uh, devices into this release. Uh, as we go along, we also made some program improvements. We added some uh, additions to support drawing curved lines, uh, three points in a curve. This is an expansion of what we added in our last release in being able to measure curves. Uh, and just some updates for grid shift files. Um, we did some driver updates and added a few nice new features on our line editing to just make it simpler to use uh, switch directions on an active line and, and close a fade. So those are uh, the new features that were added into 1.5 and I want to demonstrate. So. Um, what I'm going to do now is not go to questions yet, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go and uh, play a video of the tilt functionality. Uh, so I'm going to switch over here and just give it a second. And get everything loaded up. Okay. So we're, of course, challenged uh, 
in a webinar to try and record things that we uh, need to be out in the field and to get a GNSS uh, signal to uh, our receiver that's in tilt mode. So the best way to do this was really to go out and record a video and then I'm just going to kind of talk over the top of showing you how we configure tilt for a Leica GS18. In this case, I've started um, the connection, I've connected to the device already, and I've, I've set up my uh, communications for corrections. And we're just at the point where I <clears throat> was going to configure the antenna. So I'll start the video now, and then I'll sort of narrate what uh, how you set up the tilt here. and you can get your uh, information, um, uh, more detailed information about your connection. And the same thing for the communications, you know, I'll expand that. We're connected by Bluetooth to the device. And then on the correction side, um, I'm using data collector internet. Um, it's my end trip and my mount point. And I'm using the uh, messaging format RTCM3. So I've got the device configured and now I'm just going to put in my antenna height, uh, two meters for the rod, select OK. And for each uh, GNSS receiver we you know, set all the proper settings for the antenna height so you just have to put the, the height of the rod. And next we set tolerances. Um, you can choose different tolerances so in this case I'm going to use uh, RTK fixed. And you have the option here to change some of your parameters. So I'm going to take observations and change them from three to five for each measurement. And then one of the other things um, in your tolerances is, is you can set your auto store and some of the screens you see when you take a, a shot. And you can also allow override of tolerances or not. So I'm going to leave the override tolerances button on right now, but turn off the auto store and skip screen so we can just take a look at those as we're taking a few measurements here. And finally, we're at the tilt correction. This is new and what we added. We've got enable and disable. So right now it's enabled and you can see the tilt uh, was working there. I hit the disable button there and now uh, tilt is off. I tap it again, tilt's on. Uh, and you can see I'm moving it around a little bit so you can see the tilt working. Also I'm changing, uh, now I turned on the tilt rejection. And here's where, uh, you want to put in your tilt rejection angle of what you want to be able to measure within uh, a certain degree from vertical. And if you go over that, you see it turns red uh, under uh, green and allows you to take a measurement. And again, with the new uh, IMU uh, tilt measurement, you can set that at you know probably pretty high. I set it at 20 degrees, but you can do 35 or better. So now we're in the map screen, and you can see I've got tilt on. If you um, you know, you'll see when I get back, I'm just going to set the map here a little bit. And I think I set some of the opacity a little better. And on the top bar here, you can see the little, um, you've got your standard deviations and then the tilt button. If I tap that, it brings out the pop up uh, to show the actual tilt and direction. So, uh, and again, if I went back and disabled my tilt and I wasn't using tilt, that little tilt icon would not show in that observation toolbar. So I'm just back to my instrument. I enabled it again. And here you see the tilt on the screen. So I'm just, you know, got the rod up and I'm just going to choose <clears throat> a couple codes here to attach to the measurements. So I'm going to set a chain link fence as a code. And you can see that I haven't got any uh, lines uh, or anything set up on the project yet. So I decide that I can tap my line on the bottom toolbar there and I can choose either a straight line or a curve. I'm going to leave it as a, a straight line here. 
And then uh, if I go and open my lines page, again, I'll, I'll take chain link fins. I'm gonna set one is active, and now I'm ready to uh, you know, take some measurements. So I can walk to you know, where I wanna take my first measurement and hit the measurement button. And you can see in the status, it was counting down the five measurements. It's acceptable and I can store the point and it's now on the map. So walking quickly over to you know, the next point, zoom in a little. Um, actually, I zoomed in a little past the uh, map resolution here, so I was back so I can see a background map from the satellite image I'm using. And again, saving point two. So again, it's a fence, so I've got a line connecting the points. It's quite easy to you know, go in and out to your uh, instrument settings. So here, um, again, I was using the screens where I wanted to look and review you know, the shot information. So I went to the tolerances and just changed that so that I can do auto store um, when I wanna store points quicker. So here again, uh, walking to the next point, taking a shot. And the nice thing about, of course, the uh, IMUs uh, is that you don't have to spend the time leveling the device. You can really get to the point, you know, try and keep it, you know, level, uh, but really quite quickly take a shot and move to the next point. And we do have the uh, tolerances turned on. On the for tilt on the uh, device right now, so I think it's this next shot that I took where um, again I went to the the location, but then went uh, out of tolerance. So I'm outside the tolerance that you want, and as you can see, the status is tilt rejected, and in, it's not going to take the shot until I'm within tolerance. So now that I'm back in tolerance, it's counting down and taking the shot. So again, if you're out of tolerance, you just have to correct it and it'll take the shot and you can move on. If for some reason um, you want to you know, take a shot and uh, not have any tolerance uh, set, then you can just turn the tolerance option off and then go to a location where maybe you have to tilt the GNSS further to take your shot. And then um, with tolerance off, it just takes the shot and it's calculating back to the tip where it is on the ground. Uh, another option on that uh, is that you can <clears throat> use the tolerance override. And in this case, I'm going to put tilt rejection back on. Go back. And this time when I take the shot, I'm not going to be able to get back within tolerance, but I can decide to hit the tolerance override button and store the position. What that does do is in the raw file, there is a record that there is a, a tolerance override is associated with this shot. So that was um, a quick um, video of just showing uh, how you can use the tilt functionality you know, in the field with uh, IMU devices. Uh, it does speed up a lot of the uh, time in the field if you're taking multiple shots, uh, especially with the, you know, if you've got the same codes and you're working on the same line, it's real, really quite simple to just move from point to point, take your shots and move on. So this really helps save time in the field. Um, we've supported uh, a number of devices uh, with the IMU in this release. Uh, there's devices from Stonex, there's S900A, uh, S900. Um, there's, uh, I think, uh, uh, eGPS, eye gauge. Uh, so there's a, a number of devices that have come out recently 
supporting the IMU technology, and we've added uh, build drivers for these and added it into the program. So that uh, was a demo of the uh, tilt functionality. And now what I'd like to do is to um, actually switch over and see if I can Uh, share my device. So I've got a uh, uh, an Android tablet that hopefully um, will show up. Chris, are you seeing the uh, tablet? Uh, not yet. It looks like it's still showing the video. Okay. Uh, let me okay. I'm just going to try and switch this again. Just give me a second, and I will try and get this tablet live. Well, technical difficulties. It's worked in practicing. There we go. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Well, thanks for bearing with me on this. Um, so here is uh, what I wanted to do now is, is talk a little bit about our, our uh, import DXF as a, a background layer. So when you open up a project, you have the option to uh, import uh, files. In this case, uh, I'm going to import a DXF file that was prepared um, by our CAD program in MS CAD, and you can, you know, browse to get the the um, the file, uh, and you can browse a number of devices. You can load the file onto your device, like in the downloads folder or into a file. In this case, uh, I have actually got it on Google Drive, and so I can go to go to my drive. Uh, I can set up a folder for import, and I can select the file that I want to import. And as you can see, I got. Um, the file is now uh, ready to import. I've got the units button here. So uh, I know that I put this unit, the file in, in in meters uh, from the CAD program. If the file you're importing is in different units than what the project file is, you can actually select the project units. Um, in this case, if I want to do it like in, in the US survey feed or whatever, you could select that. Then when you imported the file, it would do a conversion uh, on the DXF to make sure everything lined up properly in the units that your project is in. So I know this is in meters, so I'm going to leave it there. And we have two options on the import. I can import or I can attach as a XREF or external reference. If I import it, it will import all the lines and all the points into the project database. So if I want to import and use uh, this project and all the lines and make them active, I can do that. In this case, I'm going to import it as, a, a, as an XREF, and I've imported the file into the project. And now, uh, as you can see on the data panel, we have our XREF data panel, 
and the file is now checked, so it's it, the default is on when you uh, load it in. And you can turn on other uh, multiple DXFs, or you can display other projects in a background layer uh, if you're out in the field working. And what we've added is a selectable toggle at the top. Uh, default again is on when you start uh, load a, a DXF. I'm going to turn that off for now, and then we can show you know, the file as loaded. And so this was a, just a test file we ran around our office um, with the parking lot, uh, sidewalks around the office. And, you know, if I wanted to take some points, uh, you know, I can tap here and, you know, see the points and everything whoop, that were in the DXF. And move it around and then if I wanted you know if I had an instrument connected and I was wanting to measure you could you know take your measurements and see this as a background only now if I wanted to actually take some of the points on here and use them I'd turn selectable on so this time now when I come in and have the, the map in the background layer if I tap on the map you can see that I have um, I tapped an area, there were a couple points in there. I can choose to actually add a point to the map. I can change the name or the code if I want to make it match what I'm doing in the project and save it. So now you can see that the, the point, uh, 329, is much darker than the uh, background layers, which are uh, probably at, I think, a 60% opacity compared to the points that you're working on on the project. Uh, at this point now, I could take that point. It's now in my points list. And I could select that point, and I could decide I want to stick to it, for example. The other option is I can take a line, so let's say this segment here, and I can add the line itself. Now, the way this works right now is where we can select the line, and it takes all the um, vertices on that line and adds them as points and all the line segments. So if I select that line and add that, as again, you can now see that it went darker uh, and it's now active. And again, if I go to my line um, data panel, I can choose to edit that line. And now if I wanted to um, delete segments on the line, do some work, add a different, different uh, new line segments uh, to the line, you can do that. Um, I'd also mention that um, on here that we added a few new features in our uh, line editing uh, in this release. And we basically, if you look in the bottom here, we've got uh, bottom left, we've got a switch line direction. So that basically, switches the active end of the line, and it also changes the lines in the vertice list. So 185 was top, now 207 is top. So that means that the, the vertice at the bottom of the list, 185, is now the active vertice. Uh, and again, we can switch between those. Uh, the other option we added was the option to uh, close the line. So again, if you've measured like around a box and you want to close the figure, you don't have to go back to the beginning. You can just tap close and close that. Uh, another uh, nice feature too is we've added a line information page. So if you want more details on the line, the length, the length of different segments within the line, you can scroll through these and it gives you the length and the uh, azimuth direction of that line. So that's the uh, new feature that we've added uh, for importing DXF. One of the um, other things that we've added, uh, if I go into a draw mode, and um, let's just you know save a point here, and I've added the, the line.
one nice thing too is you can see that we have the rubber band line now that that works. So um, I think that's um, the main uh, features that we added. That uh, is about all the time I have to go through today. We have added um, again uh, support for curves and uh, you know some other updates. Uh, to the program, but again, the two main features that we added were support for tilt, which is working really well, and uh, it's really nice to be able to bring in a DXF, you know, as a as a background map, and then be able to work with elements out of that. And again, on the uh, Showgenius for Android, it's quite easy if you have an internet connection to be able to switch and see. Uh, you know different map types, including satellite images, to help position your se yourself. And again, I know it gets busy if you have a background map and a satellite image. One of the things you can do is again use the map opacity, and you know move everything back to you know where you can see it easily on the screen out in the field. All right, so uh, that's it for the uh, covering the features for today. Uh, Chris, I'll turn it back to, over to you to see if there's any uh, questions that have come in. Uh, actually, today was a little bit more quiet group, so no questions this time, Ken. Okay. Well, very good. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, we are recording this session, and we'll post it up uh, afterwards. So if anyone has uh, any questions, uh, you can feed them back through me, or if you have friends that want are interested in any of these features, you can refer them. Uh, to the recording of this webinar. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day.